Father, we have no wisdom apart from you. We have no wisdom apart from you. You are so wise, God. Jesus, you are wisdom. And Father, you have uh, you have called us to be like Jesus. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favor with men and favor with God. And I pray, God, that you would grant us your wisdom. We thank you for the book of Proverbs. I thank you, God, that as we continue to go through it and go through these different chapters every day of this month, that you would just continue to highlight, enlighten your people. But God, not just we just don't want to read your word. We want to be doers of your word. And so, Father, we just ask for your grace. We ask for your wisdom tonight. We ask that you would just move in power. We need you, Jesus. And I pray, God, as I, as I just share uh, what you've placed upon my heart, God, I just want to speak 1 Peter 4.11. When you speak, speak the words of God. Speak the oracles of God. And I pray, God, for sincerity. I pray, God, for truth. I pray, God, for love. Um, just to be in the midst of, of this message. And so, God, have your way. Make your children wise. We need you, God. We need you. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Well, hey, amen. Amen. Uh, Sunday night, um, I was going to take a moment of silence for the uh, Patriots. I am. It's like the Dolphins won a Super Bowl because the Patriots are out of the playoffs and we got to knock them out of the playoffs. It's just an exciting day. Um, I'm a little too excited about it, actually. And uh, But anyway, uh, that's why I'm wearing the Dolphin shirt. And uh, my condolences to my Patriot folks. Um, but it's been a long time coming. Way too long. Uh, hey, my verse tonight is uh, Proverbs 20, chapter 20, verse 25. And there was a number of phenomenal verses in there. One of my favorites, a man of understanding, Proverbs 20, verse 5. A man of understanding draws deep waters out of a person's heart. Um, uh, the one that walks in righteousness, right? His children are blessed. But this one really, just for some reason, I felt led to share. Proverbs 25, it says, it is a snare to say rashly, it is holy, and to reflect only after making vows. Let me read that again. It is a snare to say rashly, it is holy, and to reflect only after making vows. Now, this happens a lot where we just kind of see something. We get into relationships and it, it looks good and, and and we just move quickly. We move rashly. It, it looks, everything looks good on the surface. So let's just do this, you know, and we don't check under the hood, like checking under the hood of the car. Um, we, we don't do any background. We don't look for fruit. Jesus, he told us, hey, look at the fruit on the tree. Look at the fruit on the tree. But a lot of times we'll just have an experience or a moment and we'll just say, man, this is holy. And we'll make a rash, a rash judgment or a rash decision. And then we're ensnared, the Bible says. And we sometimes even can make vows and align ourselves with things that we thought were holy, but were really unholy. And that's why scripture is very important. That's why I titled this message tonight, Let Me Pray About That. Because the joke in the church, by the way, is when you ask somebody, hey, would you like to do this? Or would you want to do that? They usually say, let me pray about it. That's like the Christian no, right? If somebody ever says back to you, let me pray about it. Let me just tell you, that might be the Christian no. But here's the deal. I believe Proverbs 20, 25 is something that we need to be praying about. Like, hey, I need to pray about this and I need to, to, to consider this. And look, because listen, God has given us wisdom. He's given us discernment. He, he just doesn't want to check our brains out, right? And so Joshua chapter 9, if you, if you have your Bibles, uh, it's a story of how the Israelites were taken over the land as they were coming into uh, Israel. And they were just taking off people, right? Nothing could stop them because God was with them. And then this group uh, decided, man, we better make a covenant with the Israelites. And so they decided to trick them. And so uh, uh, this is the story here in Joshua 9, 12 through 13. It says, here is our bread. And these people showed him the bread that they had. It was still warm when we took it from our houses, our food for the journey on the day we set out to come to you. But now behold, it is dry. 
and crumbly. These wineskins were new, and when we filled them, behold, they burst. And these garments and sandals of ours are worn out from a very long journey. So the men took some of their provisions, but did not ask the counts did not ask counsel from the Lord. You may want to highlight that. The response is, is they just took some of their provisions, but they did not ask counsel from the Lord. They didn't check with God. They, 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 they were about to make a rash vow and they ensnared themselves. Verse 15, and Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them live. And the leaders of the congregation swore to them. And here's the reality. These people were lying. These people were, were, were um, trying to trick them. They were trying to save themselves. They were actually really close. They weren't far away. But because they never sought counsel from God, they made a covenant and a holy vow because they acted rashly. And that's what this proverb is about, Proverbs 20, uh, 25. It's a snare to say rashly, it is holy and to reflect only after making vows. Um, the next passage I just want to, I want you to turn to is 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Um, and uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 6. A lot of times we're in a, in a church service, right? And I want to say this, um, we just, well, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it here in a minute. But, but let's, 2 Corinthians 9, 6, it says this. It says, the point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So a lot of times we hear that when the offering plate's about to come, right? And and, and it's an encouragement. Hey, it's, it's telling the word of God. Now, sometimes people can tell the word of God out of a pure motive, but other times they can tell the, the word of God like that, and they're using it to put pressure on you to give. And that's why the next verse is so important. At our church, we have a, have a tithe box in the back. We don't pass the plate. We have a tithe box in the back. And the verse that we have on that box is verse 7. It's very important. It says, each, must, each one must give as he has decided in his heart. Decided. So a person needs to decide in their own heart what they want to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion. So that word compulsion means to be pressured or even forced for God loves, it, it finishes up with seven, a cheerful giver. And so we do the box because, man, we take this one scripture very, very seriously at our church. I don't want to pressure anybody to give. I, I shouldn't have to remind anybody to give. And, 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 and often we see people operating out of wrong motives, not all the time, but sometimes when they're maybe telling stories to try to get people to give more or, 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 or doing X, Y, and Z. Listen, I was at a church one time I was visiting and I was sitting there and then they the offering started, right? And so they did miss, dismiss people by rows. And so I'm sitting in the row and the guy's like, hey, you gotta get up. I'm like, but I don't wanna get up. He's like, well, I'm like, what is this about? He's like, it's offering, you gotta get up. It's your row. And so I went up, I went down to the front and what was down at the front was the pastor and there was a bucket and the pastor was standing over the bucket and you had to put your money in the bucket. And I walked by because I'm like that. I didn't put nothing in it. Why? Because of this verse, right? I'm not gonna let you force me. I'm not gonna let you pressure me. I'm not gonna allow you to put me under compulsion to give. I will allow the Holy Spirit to lead me and to guide me when it's time to give. And so, man, we we pastors, we we we're gonna be under stricter judgment. So I want to be very careful, man. When people give to me, listen, um, uh, I, I want to make sure I'm not putting people under compulsively because listen, that sometimes we can push people to give rashly and they think it's holy, they think it's good, but we're ensnaring them. And so it's a big, big danger. It's a big danger for, for us as well is to look at different things that do happen and always go to the worst in their motive. And I'm not trying to do that, right? So a lot of times, why do people do what we do? Now, why was this church doing what? Were they trying to disobey that scripture? No, they weren't trying to disobey the scripture. It was probably the culture. It's probably what they've always been doing. And when you are raised in a certain culture, you usually just don't question that culture. It's what we always do around here. We do three songs, then the sermon, then one song, and everybody goes goes home, right? And so it's just, hey, this is what we do, you know? And so 
uh, 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 sometimes people are doing things and it's not a corrupt motive. It's all, it's what's always been done. And that's why it's, it's, it's very important that we don't judge to condemn, but we just judge and we discern and we say, okay, God, what are you saying? What do you want me to do? Right? And so, uh, listen, I am, what am I, what am part of my job is to raise money, right? It's part of my job. Listen, uh, I don't want to put anybody under compulsion, but I do want to tell people that, man, what we're doing is good. Let me brag real quick on, on Carver Christian Academy. Not a lot of you know this, but we started a Christian school this year, and we just assessed the first uh, part of the year with our kindergarten students. We only have one grade, right? Don't despise small beginnings. Um, and so we just stepped out in faith, and we started a Christian school. Listen to the results. It says, it said our students went up an average of 136 points, one half of the year. 62% of our children are reading in the 70th, 70th percentile, meaning that they scored higher than 76% of kindergartners nationally. Let me say that again. Our kids are already 70%, 76% higher than kindergarten students nationally. Why? Jesus. Jesus. Okay? He is the reason. That is why we're successful, because we're doing everything as unto the Lord. And we've got Michelle Rasmussen, and we've got uh, Miss Sarah, and Paige, and, and, and Joseph, and, and Miss Mary, and, and everybody is working together to love on these kids because we're tired. We're tired of the injustice that's happening in our school system where 54% of kids can read on grade level in Palm Beach County. And I'm really tired about the injustice that 30% of African American children can read on grade level in Palm Beach County. And so we stood up and we stand up and we say it's not going to happen. And so listen, Listen, I'll tell you, check under the hood. I don't want you to give tonight. I can't take any money off Facebook, but I'll tell you, check out our ministry. Check out the fruit. Check out what's on the tree. Don't just give because somebody tells a story about X, Y, and Z. Hey, let me see the outcomes. Listen, the past number of years at Urban Youth Impact, our kids come in, we test them on their reading scores. On average, 10 to 14% can read on grade level. That is injustice. But by the end of the year, 75% are reading on grade level. And look, look under the hood. Look at the fruit. There's a lot of people collecting a lot of money and there's no fruit. And the reason why is because they're, they're telling these so stories and telling these things and trying to make bread and they're not really doing anything. So we don't want to give rashly because it's a snare. Don't think because you heard a good story that it's holy. Anyway, motive, 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 motive. It's easy to say rashly it is holy and to reflect only after making vows. Here's the next thing that I kind of want to talk about too is, is leadership and, and counselors and friends, um, future spouse, right? Right? You've got to be very, very careful to discern and to observe, right? So coming out of my addiction, I didn't talk to my wife for probably the first year and a half um, when we met. I'd say hi, but she thought I was stuck up. She thought I was arrogant. I was just trying to stay away from females, okay? So that's why it's important not to judge on the surface because you never know what somebody's going through, right? I was trying to overcome uh, the girls, right? And so I'm just not even gonna say hi to you, girl, because you look good, baby. I'm gonna stay away, but anyway. And so and so we don't we want to be people that discern and watch. So I had the opportunity to observe my wife for two years before I asked her out. I wanted to know what kind of person she was. I just didn't want to be sucked in by the outside, which is usually what people do. And this happens a lot. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn to 1 Timothy 5.22. 1 Timothy 5.22. Uh, it says this. It says, do not be hasty in the laying on of hands nor take part in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Laying on of hands, putting somebody in leadership too quickly. In fact, another passage says that um, don't put a young person in leadership because, somebody young in the faith, 
because they might get puffed up and arrogant and fall into the snare of the je- the devil. And so we've got to allow people to be tested and be proven before we put them into leadership. There's been a lot of people that I've put in leadership over the years where I was too hasty. I looked and discerned and I thought that they were holy, but then they got exposed as unholy because there was things that were hidden in their life that got exposed once they got put into leadership. And so this is a, a serious problem. Look, 1 Timothy 5.24 the 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 a verse later it says the sin of some people are conspicuous now that word conspicuous means this it stands out in the open it's obvious it's evident right going before them into judgment but the sins of others appear later you might want to highlight that there's been people that have come in that oh man this guy's got this and this and they've got this all the bells and whistles they're awesome but then a few years later you realize wow uh, this is out of order, 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 and it's too late because you you affirm their leadership way too quickly. We do this a lot of times in the church with marriages as well, where we meet, oh, we're soulmates, and right away, you know, and, 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 and the wedding, right? It's just love at first sight, and we just, right? And then a few years later, we're like, oh my gosh, how do I get out of this marriage? And that's a, that is a sad reality because, of a, because someone got into a snare, they acted too hastily, they thought it was holy, and then they made a vow before the Lord. And that's a very serious thing. Choosing your friends as well. I just, I'm not going to meet somebody and then be best buddies and let's go hang and chill together. I want to watch how you live your life. I want to get to know you as it grows. I already did a message on this, uh, Proverbs 13, 20, on December 13th. You can go back and look at it. But it says this, one who walks with the wise will grow wise, but a companion of fools will suffer harm. If I hang out with foolish people and I'm not watching their life, the Bible says I will suffer harm. I, it's not I might suffer harm, I may suffer harm. No, 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 no. When you hang around fools, you're going to suffer harm. And so this is extremely important. It's extremely important. Christian, wherever church you go to, man, before you joined, what, did you just join because you had a good Sunday morning experience? Think about that for a second. Listen, Broadway every day puts on a good experience. Hey, the Dolphins, what's up? Put on a great experience today. Uh, They were selling out crowds (laughs) when they never made the playoffs. So, So look, people can put on a good experience, but joining a church, man, what's up with their doctrine? What is their doctrine? Do I know what they believe and why do they believe it? What is their church structure? Do they have a governing board, an elder board? Uh, Does the pastor set his own salaries? Does he have a bunch of yes men on there? I mean, how do they choose elders? How do they choose deacons? Is it a congregational rule? What's their budget? A lot of churches are like all woke now, but then when you look at their budget, their budget has been sleeping for a long time, right? That's why I tell people, hey, you can look at our budget. Our budget's been woke for days, right? We got a lot of money funneling into uh, loving uh, those that are, that are coming from areas that are concentrated disadvantage, right? So, so our budget speaks that we care about social justice, right? We live that, right? And so, but many people just, you know, oh, they're doing such good things. I saw this video. And so, yeah, I'm going to give to it. And you don't even know where that money's going. And so, guys, this is a uh, good warning for us. Uh, It is a great warning for our nation. Uh, There was a group that got a lot, a lot of money this year, right? Black Lives Matter. I don't know. I haven't seen nothing done in my my area, okay? I ain't seen done nothing done yet in my 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 city. And so I'm not saying nothing's going to be done, but I'm like where's the money because there is billions and billions and billions of dollars. If you ask me, "Hey, Chris, you've been uh doing ministry for 20 years. Where's the money?" I will show you. I will show you the people who own houses who ain't written from us, but they own them, first-time home buyers. I'll show you what we've done because there's proof in the pudding. And so guys, God wants us to walk with discernment. 
The verse for today, whoever, 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 it's not whoever, that's my, that's, that, 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 that's another verse. It says this, Proverbs twenty twenty five. it's a snare to say rashly, it is holy, and to reflect only after making vows. And so, Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you that you are good, that you are a good God. And I pray, God, that your people, your people, whether it's giving, whether it's joining a church, whether it's choosing friends, whether it's a spouse or a future marriage partner, God, whatever it is, that we wouldn't be like Joshua and the the leaders of Israel were in chapter 9, where they just didn't seek your counsel, and they just made a vow. And they got ensnared to that vow, thinking that they were doing a holy thing. These people look poor, they made a vow and they were ensnared. And so God, help us not to be like that. Help us to be people that obey what you say, Jesus. There are many, many wolves and we need to beware. And they come at you in sheep's clothing, but you can tell what kind of tree it is by the fruit that is on their tree. And so God, make your people wise, that they would not just move out of emotion, but they would check with you, Holy Spirit of God, not pressured, not under compulsion, but bringing you in to wise decisions because you want what's best for them. You want them to not be ensnared. That's what your word declares. That's why you gave us this warning. Continue to make us wise. And God, I pray for every person that's listening, God, that tomorrow they'll get in Proverbs chapter 21 and they'll dig in and they'll say, God, what, what is my verse for today? What is my verse for December 21? And as we continue to go through this book, God, continue to strengthen your people by the power of the Holy Spirit, that your church would be awakened to true realities, that they would walk in truth and not walk under deception, that they would be the wise people among this earth, shining, shining as a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. And so, God, I just pray this for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray this for myself. I pray this for our local churches as well, God. Oh, Father, continue to purify us so that our churches, God, reflect your heart and your love, that your truth would reign, and that we would move with you, Holy Spirit of God, submitting to your word, honoring your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Have a good night. Jimmy, what's up, buddy? How you doing, man? It's good to see you, brother. I miss you, man. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.